In this video, I'm gonna give you three simple compositional rules and guidelines when it comes to how to use depth of field. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up my friends? Welcome back to another episode here on Adorama TV. And look, if you don't already know by now, I'm a huge fan of kind of creating guides and frameworks and simple rules to help photographers understand why we do a certain thing. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about some simple compositional rules when it comes to controlling depth of field, specifically, when should we shoot wide open? When do we shoot more closed down? And when do we want to go somewhere in between? Let's kick this off with rule or guideline number one with busy backgrounds or even backgrounds that are necessarily not so desirable. That's generally when we're gonna shoot wide open with our apertures. So this is where we wanna pop those primes on, shoot at 1.2 if you got it, 1.4, 1.8, 2.0, 2.8, any of those wider apertures because what we want to do is create separation and depth between our subject and background. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this first example here, this is an image that I would say is shot on a busy background. It's not necessarily unwanted by any means. There's nothing bad in this background. I love having kind of backgrounds of grass. This looks beautiful. But the only thing is with a closed down aperture, if you were to see all those blades of grass, it can become very distracting. So oftentimes in scenes like this, I'm shooting a little bit wider. Now this is actually on a lens that can go out to 1.4. This is on a 105 prime Sigma art lens. Uh, I'm actually shooting this at F2.8 because that gives me enough depth and separation in the background. I love the way it kind of falls out of focus and it doesn't give me so narrow of a focus that I can't even tell you know, her hands are holding a, a, a branch in front of her. This next scene is an example of kind of an undesirable background. I mean, we're shooting in a parking lot for crying out loud. You've got curb, you've got weird bushes and a fence and a closed down railroad track right behind him. It's stuff that I don't necessarily want in focus. The Sigma 50 that's on the, the 5D4, and I'm shooting this at 1.4 because I want that background to be as soft and out of focus as possible. And I'm also using another trick here, which is to underexpose the scene, which also helps to kind of eliminate those distractions. But again, shoot wide open. Okay, another example is this scene, and it's not necessarily, again, this is a beautiful location, a beautiful spot. I would classify this again, though, as a little bit busy, because if I were to shoot this with the buildings and everything in focus, you're gonna end up seeing a lot of tops of warehouses. So again, shooting 1.4 wide open on a Sigma 50 art on this shot. This is an example from a recent wedding that I photographed where you know you had a lot of people around us actually in these corners, if it were brighter and if it were in focus, you'd probably see people working. So not only do I not wanna necessarily see those tables, I wanna focus that entire viewer's experience on really this mund up, the, the, the ceremony kind of structure and the flowers and everything around them and on the couple. So again, in this scene where I feel like it's rather busy, I wanna be shooting at say 1.4. This is on a 24 millimeter Sigma art lens. So rule number two is when we're working in beautiful backgrounds, there's really not necessarily a reason to shoot wide open. I mean, if you like the look stylistically, that's totally fine, but the better the background, the better the scene, the better an environment, the less we have to do to manipulate to make it look good. So when I get to a beautiful scene like this one in Hawaii, I'm shooting this at 1 200 f 7.1 and ISO 100 because I do want depth in the scene. I wanna be able to see everything behind them. It's absolutely a gorgeous vista. And I even want those foreground leaves to be in focus. I want everything about this shot to be visible to the audience. So we're shooting this closed down at F7. Okay, so for this next shot, this is my son, Ethan, and he's learning how to fly. I'm teaching him how to fly my drone. And if you wanna, you know, send this image out to DJI because it's like licensably good. Is that a word, licensably good? Uh, but yeah, feel free, do so. I'd love to, DJI, I'd love to work with you. Anyway, so, I loved everything about this. You can see how I've kind of framed it where the uh, horizon lines of the mountains kind of lead into him. We have this beautiful sunlight in the background, this field. I want the, the drone to be in focus. Once again, there's no reason here to be shooting this wide open. Shooting this wide open, I really lose the depth that I want to preserve in this type of a photograph, especially in the foreground, especially in the drone itself. I wanted the DJI logo to actually be readable. It doesn't need to be perfectly in focus, but I actually want it to be readable. So, you know, 
just in case, just in case. But anyway, let's go on to another one. So this is an example of, let's say if you're shooting weddings and you've got a scene with a lot of depth and also the background looks really nice. Now, if there were cars lined up on the street in the background, I probably would say, let's not shoot this, you know, close down. Let's not shoot this. Let, let's get this more wide open so we can kind of blur that out a little bit more. But again, I love the boats in the background, the whole environment, and I need these rows of chairs to be in focus. My rule of thumb when it comes to scenes like this, if you're shooting a scene like this where you want, you know, most, most of these chairs kind of, they don't have to be tack sharp, but you want it visible and in focus. I'm usually shooting around between F7 and F11. And here's the deal. Take your focus and place it on I'll usually kind of find that that primary featured item deep into the shot. So that's in this case is the mundup. It's the altar, right? So I'm placing the focus over that and I'm allowing the the aperture, the depth of field to carry forward and get as much of these uh, chairs in focus as well as carry backwards to the background. I find this to be much better than if you were to say focus on these foreground chairs in the front because you might get a little bit more sharpness out of these foreground chairs, but what's gonna happen is the background and the depth is gonna fall off real quick. So in a scene like this, focus deep into the shot at that kind of infinity point or just kind of on the horizon and let the camera, let the aperture pull everything forward. You can always do focus stacking, but when you're working in like a, you know, high pace scene like this, a high pace environment, you don't necessarily wanna to stop to tripod to do a focus stacked image. You wanna just close it down get a shot that's great, that works, and move on. But if you're doing landscapes, focus stacking is the best option for that. Okay, here's another example. This is up in Banff, and I just saw the sun peeking out of these trees, and I, I love the way that it looked. And again, this is a, another little tip and trick here, right? I want the sun flare to actually form into a little bit of a starburst. So in addition to wanting an overall sharp image, which by the way, when we start closing down the aperture a little bit, when we get to Let's say that the lens is wide open at f2.8. Well, usually your sharpest apertures are gonna be around f5.6, f7.1, f11. That's one of the considerations. And in the scene, I'm like, you know what? Everything's beautiful. I want everything in focus. I also want this image to be patak sharp. Uh, and on top of that, I know that by closing down my aperture, I'm gonna create a starburst pattern of any flares. So we go to f7.1 in this shot and we shoot this image. Rule number three is when we're trying to work with foregrounds and do a little bit of depth in our shot and preserve a little bit of foreground to background depth, I want you to think somewhere in between, okay? Oftentimes we get in the mindset of like, oh no, if I want that depth, I gotta shoot this wide open. But look, this is a shot on the 105 art, right? So this prime can go to 1.4. And if I shoot this image at 1.4, my foreground is literally gonna be just a big blob. I wanna see kind of an implied portrait, an implied profile of the male subject in this shot. If I shoot wide open, I'm gonna lose that. Again, if I go all the way to F7 and F11, then I see too much of him and I also see too much of the background. So when we start to use foreground and background elements to create depth, I want you to think in between. So this is a F4. Similarly, this is that same kind of grass scene, right? Kind of like in the last one where we were shooting at f2.8, I was kind of testing out my, my apertures in this because I want some of the blades of grass to be sort of sharp, but I also want that beautiful fall off in the background. So instead of going to 1.4, I'm shooting this around f2. I noticed that f2.8 and this distance to our subject, we were getting a little bit too much. I, I was losing some of that softness that I wanted in the background. So we went to f2. This is that exact same scene that you saw just a moment ago in Banff, right? Only this time I saw some really great frozen branches and I was like, man, that'd be beautiful just for another shot to kind of create a shoot through of really almost the same scene. Uh, but we're gonna make this kind of cabin sort of the emphasis of this shot. And we're gonna shoot kind of the same thing, but now with these branches framing the entire shot. Once again, if I shoot this image at F28, those branches become almost unintelligible. You can't really tell what they are other than just blurry objects in front of the lens. Again, it also matters how close you are to these different objects, right? But if I go all the way down to F11, F14, F18, wherever, if I go too far closed down, then what we end up having is a foreground that sort of competes. There's a little bit too much detail, a little bit too much distraction, and, and we kind of get there, right? So once again, you're going to find the sweet spot just kind of raise the aperture up and down. 
using live view is going to be one of your best tricks here because you're going to have a live preview of it. If not, just take a shot. Finally, this is another scene. And in this scene, you're going to see, well, now I'm actually wide open, but I do want depth in this shot. Okay, so for the lens that I'm using here, shooting wide open and at this distance, it gives me a good amount of depth in the foreground. And I also actually wanted this very foreground element right here, this one right here to be blocking out a piece of garbage in the background. I think there was like an outhouse or something right off to the left of the frame because the left of the frame is the parking lot. So I want you guys to keep in mind that your, your distance to your subject, the lens choice that you're using. So the distance from the camera to your subject and the subject to the background, that's gonna come into play. And that's really my fourth and final kind of bonus tip here. So that bonus tip is remembering your lens, your distance to subject and distance to the background are all at play when it comes to choosing that ideal aperture, right? Okay, so case in point. Here I have a sample image shot on a 2470. Now when you shoot these types of images on a 2470 wide open, even at f2.8, okay? So if you have a 2470 that opens to f2.8, everything in the image is still going to be in focus, okay? It might be a tiny bit soft depending on the lens that you're using because you're f2.8 versus let's say f7, it's gonna be more sharp and more detailed. But everything's in focus because of the focal length you're shooting at, you're shooting wide on that lens, the lens characteristics itself, the distance between you and the subject and the subject in the background. But this exact same lens, when you start stepping in, is gonna begin to operate differently. Let me show you exactly what I mean because this is the exact same lens. It's a 2470. In fact, I'm still working at a wide focal length. I'm at 24 millimeters. So if you look at these three shots, you have the widest shot right here, then closer, then even closer. With that same 2470, if we're standing further back, we don't see any depth of field in this shot. But as we start stepping into our subject and we go to these three images right here, you'll notice that the background actually starts to separate quite a bit, even when shooting again 24 millimeters at f2.8. So bringing ourselves closer to the subject exaggerates the characteristics of your depth of field. Similarly, as I step in a little bit more, so let's go to that second kind of distance shot right here. As we step in a little bit more, you see even a little bit more fall off between the background kind of detail between the first one and the second one, right? Then if we go to the final shot, right? So here's the final image. Now you start to see the background fall off even further. And we can see that by looking over on the left side, you can see it get even softer. So as we get closer and closer to our subject, the background becomes more exaggerated, more blurred. This characteristic holds true for any lens and no matter what you're shooting, right? If you're shooting macro, whether you're shooting portraiture, the closer your distance to your subject, the more that background begins to kind of blur out and go out of focus. It's that relative distance to the subject and then from the subject to the background. That's it and I hope y'all found this video useful. I love these little kind of tips, tricks, and frameworks because they make things easy for me to understand, easy for me to put into practice and that's what I want you guys to do. Go put into practice. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel and if you guys are looking for A to Z education from start to finish on lighting and portraiture and literally everything in between including running an actual business check out srloungeworkshops.com. You guys can follow us at SR Lounge and you can follow me at Pi Jirsa. And in the meanwhile, see you guys in the next video.